shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, hear him. Glory to you. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and his brother and led them up a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with them, with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it's good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. If one takes a course in the university in comparative religions, they often will say things like, um, all religions are basically a wonderful thing, They're, and they are. They lead people to the deepest questions and, and all the rest. And they'll often say that Hinduism is the most ancient religion. Um, but in reality, Abraham, and the guy who wrote the Vedas, which are the sentences in the Hindu religion, basically come from the same period in history, about 1800 years BC. Now it is true that the Vedas are more ancient in their written history, but not in the historical timeline of history. And so the Jewish people have this oral tradition that date, dates back to the same ancient time of Hinduism. But what makes the Jewish faith so unique is that its stories of the origins of the universe, what modern scholars would call their creation myth, is not like the other myths. The other myths have demiurges and kind of weird things going on, but the Christian Jewish story has human beings at the heart of the story. In other words, the story is rooted in history. And with Abram, before he took the name Abraham, God said, listen, all families, it, the communities is not a very good translation where it says that all communities will be blessed through you. He's basically saying all families will be blessed through you. In other words, Abraham, you are integral to the world's future because what I'm telling you is something that will be meaningful for every dimension and every aspect of the world. So oftentimes, people would create religion, like in the Roman Empire, as a means to control the people. It was to keep the people who were superstitious at bay. They would grow to go to great lengths in their temple worship to have mechanisms and look like something supernatural going on when it was just some guy behind the scenes kind of pulling the strings. It's not that way with our faith. Abraham was the person who was coming from this region, the Chaldees and Ur, and all the multi-polytheistic religions around him, but something made Abraham open enough to listen to God, and he believed God, and he followed God. And that's what we need more than anything else today, my brothers and sisters. We need this openness to listen to the voice of God speaking in our hearts. 
Because it's not just for us. It's not just that it gives us peace and that we'll be filled with joy and our lives will be sweet if we follow God's commandments because it just makes a lot of sense and it's not, and it's not stupid to do dumb things. I mean, it, it's great. Virtue has its own rewards. But we have something much more significant here. We basically won the lottery. Now, can you imagine winning the lottery? It's hard for me to imagine winning the lottery. But you don't understand why they chose your ticket. And if you had this lottery, you won the lottery, and you said, well, I don't understand why I won. Well, since I won it and I don't understand why I won it, well, I better not use the money. I don't think most people would do that. I think they wouldn't be concerned about why they won the lottery. And we won the lottery, guys. For some reason, Jesus Christ decided to become incarnate on planet Earth, in our solar system, in this galaxy, to reveal the very essence and mastery of the entire universe here with us. And we are tasked, through our faith, to share that good news with everyone around us. It's not easy, but we are blessed in this. And when we believe in God, which is important, but not as important as believing God, that he has revealed to us through Christ this amazing thing, this, this incredible thing where God has revealed it to us. So Lent, we go through this period of Lent to try and prepare ourselves to be mindful, to not deny ourselves all sorts of things, and to have faith to let that faith guide our behavior and our actions. In the gospel, we see Jesus revealing himself, transfiguring himself in glory today. These apostles saw Moses and Elijah, Peter, gotta love Peter, let's build three booths, then we'll have proof. People still aren't gonna believe. And if you're not of the Jewish faith, who's this Elijah guy anyways? What good is it gonna do? But it was meant for them it was meant for them to understand just how significant this reality is. And they're coming down the mountain, and Jesus tells them, I'm going to die and don't say anything until I'm risen from the dead. And they're, what is he talking about? And then if you go through and read the rest of the story, the apostles, after having this incredible mountaintop ex experience, they don't have enough faith to cast out a demon. And they're saying, Lord, why can't we do this, right? Faith is a gift. My brothers and sisters, as we go through Lent, beg the Lord to strengthen your faith. I know I do. I've been a priest 30 years, and I can say from my heart, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Let us do what we can and, and do ourselves a favor by studying the scriptures. You know, I, I was giving a homily, and there was a beautiful homily this week about Esther who's praying for God's help. But I'm thinking, man, how sad it is because most people probably don't know the backstory of Esther. You see, when we read the scriptures, things jump out at us. And we realize the story and how God uses all these, these historical realities and events that have happened to unve unveil and, and, and make clear to those who know that, that context. But we can't know the context until we read the scriptures. We try and study them understand these players throughout history Abraham Esther Ruth all these different peoples that point to this reality King David be patient with yourself God is infinitely patient with us but I beg you to seize this opportunity of Lent and carve out extra time to pray to study I've encouraged you to start listening to the catechism in a year by Michael Schmitz it's outstanding day 62 or something like that it really is just helpful to get our mind thinking about the things that matter most. We've won the lottery. Spend the money. In other words, take advantage of it. Don't just let it sit on a shelf. Try and deepen your understanding of just what a gift we've been given. It's amazing. It really is. It makes us do incredible things. We do this simple things. Wednesday night, this, this Wednesday, I think Father Sunday will be talking a little bit about our, our theme on, on betrayal, what, what that means in light of the readings, and, and Jesus talking to his apostles saying that, you know, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, all these different things. Many of us probably have experienced betrayal in our lives one way or another, 
But what does God do with that? He can transform the suffering that we endure and give it meaning because we can unite it to his suffering and therefore participate in the very redemption of the world. Don't underestimate the difference you make in God's plan. You are significant, believe it or not. You may not want to believe that, but you are really significant in God's plan. Ask the Lord to help you deepen that understanding of the significance you have in God's plan. It's amazing. Let us delve into the mystery of this mountaintop experience that we are thrust upon every time we come to Mass. We rip across the fabric of space and time and Christ is truly made present in the Eucharist. And I, I think only 17% of the people, Catholics in the United States, take, make enough effort to come to church anymore. They're saying only 30% believe in the real presence, but I bet you that number now is closer to 17%. It's probably the 17% who come to church. Because as great as the internet is and, and the streaming masses are, and I, I'm glad we can do it, and I, I continue still doing it, you still can't receive the Eucharist. You still can't take Christ and commune with him. And brothers and sisters, I hope all of us can more deeply appreciate this great mystery of our faith that we have won the lottery. I hope we all spend the money. I hope we all do our best to take that gift and pretend, not just pretend that it's something other than it is, but it's what humanity needs and it's humanity's path to salvation. And we are integral players in that mission. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand, stand and profess our faith in the only God who can save. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Begot Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church, that she may be a light to all nations and help all people turn towards Christ as they journey through this Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they work for lasting peace and mutual respect for human dignity and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rose Mary Bella, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may strive to love even our enemies so as to guide others to pursue the truth and live it and prepare disciples to love the true, the good, and the beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and are replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy matrimony, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may come to know the fullness of God's joy in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May this Lenten season and our encounter with his glory strengthen us to overcome our temptations and resolve to draw closer to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Again, we just continue to pray for peace in Ukraine, all those troubled parts of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn can be found in the One in Faith, number 749. 749. 